ಓಂ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ನಮಃ ನಮಿ ಧನ್ವಂತರಿಮಾಧಿದೇವ ಸುರಾಸುರೈ ವಂದಿತ ಪಾದ ಪದ್ಮ ಲೋಕೇ ಜರಾರುಕ ಭಯ ಮೃತ್ಯುನಾಶಂ ಧಾತಾರಮೀಶಂ ವಿವಿಧ ಔಷಧೀನ ಸೊ ನಾರ್ಮಲಿ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ದ್ರವ್ಯ when we start dravya dravyology which we already started over the last two uh, in person weekends right we have completed the practical portion normally we do the theory first and do the practical later so you've already done all the practical part you've done all the labs and everything and now we're going to get into deeper into the theory we did a little bit of theory so this is a lot of repetition but it's kind of an important repetition so i will be asking questions if you don't mind do you know what is the root word for dravya if you don't that is totally okay let me know what is dravya let me change the question what is dravya okay the root word for the dravya comes from the word dru as in the therapeutic substance right and so what is dravya anybody anything you remember we did it in uh, the weekend workshop it's a substance which can therapeutically heal awesome that is correct so there's just a few more uh, characteristics of a dravya and like i said we don't use the word herbology we used dravya of course you know i call it dravyology uh, somebody was telling me to you know get that word trademarked uh here we go dravya is a therapeutic substance and you see here you have a little salt rock the pink himalayan pink salt and you have these sage leaves on the bottom they are both dravya in the western herbology only the leaf would be an herb but the rock the rock salt right that would not be a a dra- not be an herb what is this rock salt pink rock salt used for how would that be a dravya anybody what would what you could use it in bath and you could use it in food balance vata exactly so dravya can be animate or inanimate meaning that it can also come from an animal for example we could use um uh, we use uh, you know uh leaves we use feathers we use uh things that you know honey for instance comes honey is basically a spit of the bee right <laughs> it is the it is the bee vomiting right but yeah i know <laughs> but it's a it's a dravya right so it can be animate inanimate so this rock technically crystals for example even though you know crystal is a rock but it's a dravya right rocks are not growing as such because they don't have well they do grow but they don't have they are considered inanimate it can be organic matter it's herbs rocks crystals any plant based or animal based derivative yeah dravya is a matter it has five so you can from your you can hear the dravya touch the dravya taste the dravya and smell the dravya it has it has pancha mahabhuta it is made up of five it's made up of pancha mahabhuta the five elements obviously there will be one element in a rock earth element is going to be strong right everybody is clear what dravya is now we don't say herbology that's why i keep on saying dravyology everybody is clear about that awesome there's a few more thing so the actual name the sanskrit name for dravya study of dravya is this oh my god it's such a mouthful try us dravya guna karma shastra shastra means scripture or study of dravya's qualities and dravya's actions guna is quality and karma is action so study of dravya its qualities 
and action. That's what, and that's what dravyology is, which I keep on calling. It's dravya guna karma shastra. Yeah, everybody got that? So dravya, dru is substance. Yeah. Dravya is anything that has a quality and it has an action, right? Let me give you, if you have, uh, let's say, let's say you have chili powder, right? And it's very, its property, its guna is, it's very sharp, right? And it's very sharp and, uh, you know, very spicy. That is the guna, that's the quality of the chili. Is that correct? Then what was going to be the action of the chili because of this sharpness and heat? I give you an answer. The the sharpness, it is very sharp. That's the quality. No, no, no. No, no. That's not that's not what I mean, Marion. If you have, let's say, you have a chili or pepper, right? Any chili pepper. And what is its quality? It is hot, it is sharp. Yes, that is the quality, right, Jamaria? Because its quality is hot and sharp what is its action going to be what is the therapeutic action think about it marion what is the action of hot exactly a hot and sharp will increase agni increase pitta and what does that mean is it drying or it's wet it is drying or astringent right and this pungentness, it's also the guna is pungent. Because it's pungent, will it make you kind of sweat? So it's thermogenic. Because of that pungent, you know, if you've ever had a lot of chili. Yesterday I made, uh, at home I made my own chili oil. And uh, <laughs> I boiled it in a little bit of water, sugar, and oil, you know, olive oil. Oh boy, it was so hot. And immediately your eyes water, right? And some people start sweating. That's the thermogenic heat effect, right? So the guna is hot, sharp, pungent. And the karma is, because it is hot, sharp, pungent, it is drying, astringent, increasing pitta agni. Does it make sense now? Yeah? Disha ji, are you here? You're not answering anything, so I'm wondering if you're here. Disha, are you here? Oh, perfect. Please answer the question so I know you're here. Okay. So, Dravya is therapeutic. It has a Panchamahabhati composition. It's stable, long-lasting. And you can either taste it, smell it, and so on. Right? So, this is all clear. Let's go in the second part. So the only thing I want, because we are going to go in deeply into the guna and karma, right? Let's see. So there is a lot of text about guna and karma. And when we actually get into the guna and karma part, I'm going to go deep into it. But guna, the action or the karma is because of its quality. Just that's all you need to understand for today. We did this in class. Rasavire Vipak Guna Karma Prabhava, which is the most important here, which is the most important thing in this Rasa Panchadi, Dishaji. Thanks, Marion. <laughs> okay. What is the least important from the perspective of uh, our study of Dravya? I mean, it is important, but least important, Rasa. What is more important than Rasa? Virya. What is more important than Virya? Vipaka. What is more important than Vipaka? Guna. What is more important than Guna? Karma. What is more important than Karma? Prabhava. Prabhava is most important. And we all know the meaning of these words. Rasa is taste. Guna is qualities. Actually, Rasa after Rasa comes Virya, potency. Right? We all know the meaning. Okay, let's move. So when you start reading the about Dravya, 
So, it, you know, when you start, oh, I want to become an Ayurvedic herbalist and you go get into the Ayurvedic books, you start reading Sharangdhar Samhita or you start reading different other books, Bhaisha Navali. First thing is, you remember the Sankhya we did? The five Mahabhutas and so on. That is more important and that makes the basis. Why? Because the Dravya is made of the same material. Remember the like theory of opposites? Right? So what we are made up of, Dravya is also made up of same thing. So both are made up of what? Five Mahabhutas. And some Mahabhutas are dominant and some Mahabhutas are not dominant. Right? And all of it, time is important. All the Dravya have this time, ego, mind, soul. We have it and Dravya also have them. Right? This is just basically what it's saying. So this is because Dravya is made up of the same thing you and I are made up of, right? So if you have a Dravya, if you have a Dravya like, I don't know, let's say cardamom. Is cardamom cooling or is it hot? It is cooling. Which, so which Mahabhuta is, would be strong in it? What okay, what dosha will it help most? It will have pitta most, right? But is it also okay for vata and kapha? Yes, it is also okay for vata kapha. No, Marion, you can have a lot of cardamom, no problem. Because the effect of cardamom, it's it's an appetizer, it increases appetite, it's a carminative. Remember, the prabhava is more important. Do you understand? From if, how much cardamom will you eat? One piece of cardamom or two pieces? But if cardamom was a food item that you were having lots of, like rice or grains, then you're having a lot of it. So the fact that it's cooling is not deterring us from using it because we are having small amounts, because we are having it as a dravya, small therapeutic amounts. But if you're having something as a food, then we are more interested in the rasa. Does it make sense? I just want to get all of these things clear. Please, uh, now I would like you to get your notes out. And after the end, I'm going to ask you these questions at the end of the class again. When every dravya is made up of the five Mahabhutas and Mahabhutas give it the taste. You know that, right? Let's say a Mahabhuta is made up of a space. They have other things also, but they've mostly got space in it. So the effect of the space is going to be cleansing. What do we mean by cleansing? What do you think is cleansing? Any ideas? Cleansing the stomach. Cleansing the stomach and cleansing basically mind also. Yeah. Something, for example, that is very light to eat. Yes, that is true. It will also have cleansing effect on that, but it will also kind of increase vata in the mind, space in the mind also. And air absorbing effect means, and, and I'm going to ask you, so please get your notepad and write this down space is cleansing air is astringent and absorbing fire increases agni that one you know earth adds bulk to stool so if somebody is having uh, you know constipation you know you you take that isobagol or uh, what do you call it in english vegetable fiber is that the correct word yeah i don't know what it's called would you buy it as here in the U.S. Psyllium husk. Yes, that's what we're talking about. So psyllium husk we give to somebody so that they, it adds bulk. And psyllium is what? It's all fiber, right? What if your kapha person is constipated? Are you going to give, you know, if it's a vata person, they are constipated because they do not have enough bulk. 
if you have a kafa person who's constipated, are you going to give bulk? No. You're going to increase the space so that they can start moving or increase agni. So the answer is, if somebody is constipated or not passing stool, it is not necessary you just go and buy psyllium. I knew somebody, a client of mine, she was uh, kind of vata kafa. She started taking, someone told her, she saw in the internet, older lady, and she started taking all this psyllium vegetable fiber, you know, because to increase bulk on stool, because she tended to be constipated, right? This is an older person. And actually, she she needed to add water element and fire element to her diet because she was a little dehydrated, did not have enough water, right? And, you know, she she did not. And what happens when you take fiber in your diet? What happens when you take psyllium? Does it absorb water or not? Yes or no? What do you think will happen here? Somebody who already is dehydrated and keeps on taking all of this fiber. Her stools became so hard, she had to go and get surgery and have her stool surgically removed. You know how they do? Yes. Yes, Marion. It is not equal in the West. And obviously, she should have gone. You know, this is so many of her clients, they go see something on the internet. And if somebody is usually drinking enough water, if she was drinking enough water and she was not dehydrated in the first place, Probably this may not have happened, but it's already, she did not need earth element. She used to eat grains. She, so she was already eating grains. She eat, needed water element and she needed fire element. So you have the same client, you have three, four, five different type of clients and they all have the same problem. They're all constipated. We are not going to just randomly give trifala. For example, for a kapha, we may give, uh, we may give trifala. If you give trifala to pitta, they will get diarrhea. Even giving milk causes pitta person to have diarrhea, right? You know that. That is called miridu koshta. So everything is not equal. So earth will add bulk to stool, remember that. But when you're adding earth, better to add some water too. So if you know anybody, Jamaria, who's taking all that... Uh, psyllium husk, make sure that person is also drinking enough water. You know who I'm talking about. Water and earth. Yeah, will build dhatu. So combination of water plus earth, you have somebody who's, so water per earth usually means like a protein-like substance, carbohydrate-like substance. Yeah. And of course, the combination of fire and air, you were talking about chili, chili peppers or it's called or turmeric for instance turmeric chili pepper is fire and air it scrapes datus means removes nonsense from datus yeah is it coming clear how we are using the, the even though we use the same principles in making a diet plan for somebody when we, but in the diet plan our main focus is the rasa of the food right and we are going to go do a quick review of the rasa of the food. But in the when we are making a plan for dravya, then we are having a slightly same principle, but we don't really care about rasa that much. I mean, we do, but it's very like least amount of caring. So what parts of a tree will we use? The sap of a tree is good for rasa datu. Can you give me one example of any sap from a tree? Can you think? Awesome. Oh, maple is nice and cooling, but it is also good for rasadhatu. Why? Because it's the same. Literally, maple is the rasadhatu of the maple tree. It is the same. You know how, uh, though I completely hate it and I do not advocate it, but, and people do this and, you know, whatever works. You know, when people, uh, women have a hormone issue, or they are menopausal. There's something called uh, natural hormones that they take. They literally kill cows or bovine and take, or pigs, and they take the hormonal glands and they cut the glands or the reproductive glands or hormonal glands of these animals 
and make them into a powder. And that is a natural drug they give for your hormonal imbalance. Imagine the karmic issue with it. I have students who take it and they, they say, oh, that's amazing. What about the karmic aspect? You're feeling better about your hormones, but karma, the animal was killed for this. The karma is like, it's just not worth it, in, in my personal opinion. But the idea is if you're using, like sometimes if someone has a liver issue in Chinese medicine, they will take liver of another pig and they will make a powder of the uh, liver and give to person. And that's actually supposed to be good, right? The idea is that this, it'll help. So, but we are doing that with plant. So if you have a sap of a plant, it will help the rasa dhatu, okay? But maple is also cooling, so it is kind of good for pitta as well. Plus, it helps rasa dhatu. Meaning for kapha person, maybe not so much <laughs> because it's increasing rasa, meaning it's going to increase kapha. Doesn't mean that kapha cannot have it, just have it in small amounts. I have to admit, I make uh, cookies with the... Uh, I try never to use sugar. So I use, make cookies, uh, especially since I became menopausal with uh, uh, almond butter, uh, oat, oat, oats, and uh, what do you call it? Almond butter, oats, and uh, maple syrup. That's my cookie. So good. I'm going to get it for you next time we meet. When you have any flower, can you think of a flower which would be, no, flower itself is the reproductive system of the plant, right? Correct? Can you think of a flower which is good for the reproductive system of a woman? Ashoka. Rose, Ashoka. Mary Gold. Can you name some other flowers? Lavender. If it is the flower, you can close your eyes and it's good for women. <laughs> some are obviously a lot better. There is a there is a plant that grows in Maharashtra. Dishaji, you know what I'm talking about? We are we use kum kumkum, is it called? Kokum. Kokum. Is it coke? Oh my God, I forgot. Kokum, right? Yes. Even though there are other uses of it, if you are confused, if it is a flower, flower is generally, and we are not talking about, flower is generally supportive of the reproductive system because flower is the reproductive system of the plant. Most fruits, not, not every single, again, this doesn't mean every single flower. Yeah, we are not talking about flowers that eat insects, you know, the Venus flytrap and something, not those flowers. Again, most fruits are very high in the rasadhatu. In fact, the word juice of fruit, the juice, like we say fruit juice, fruit juice can be translated as rasa. In some Indian languages, instead of saying fruit juice, they say rasa. So when somebody is low in rasa dhatu, we give them fruit juice. Will we give them dry fruits or we will give them fruit juice if somebody is low in rasa dhatu or anemic or something like that? Will you give them dried fruits or fruit juice? Yes. What will happen? What has happened is the difference between... Yes, you can give cooked also. The difference between dry fruits and fruit juice or ripe fruits so dry fruits are earth and earth element water element has been stripped out fruit juice is mostly water element little bit of earth so rasa is water element get it yes you can give them cooked because even when you cook it and you you've add added let's say marion you've added a little bit of ghee to a chutney or you've added you know the water so you've actually, every time you cook it, dry it, you're changing the Mahabhuta of the Dravya. Yeah? I will give you examples. So here's a picture of these beautiful, gorgeous grapes. I have these grapes at home. Literally, in my black backyard. I have champagne gra grapes. When you, when you make wine out of the grapes, that means you've made it into a juice and you've fermented this juice. 
what element do you think is high in this and what is it is it good for what will it do think of the effect it will have is it drying is it when you drink wine does it dehydrate you or hydrate you dehydrate <laughs> nandini ji you had lots of wine <laughs> oh thank you yes it is dehydrate in fact there are wines out there exactly anybody who's had who used to be like who used to drink wine i've had a few not much but enough to know what they do the tongue i don't know what it's called but you know like this this chardonnay or there are certain wines when you put them on your tongue they as soon as they on your tongue they dry out your tongue you know the ones i'm talking about i think it's chardonnay exactly marin do you know the ones but the red wine is a little bit different than that white wine white wine is super drying so it is doing the dehydration not what has happened it is the same fruit juice but it has been fermented and the fermentation and the alcohol that has come in the wine what is it doing it has the drying effect it it increases pitta it is heating and it is a drying effect so wine is wonderful for a drying effect so excellent in small amounts for for kapha and small amounts if if pitta is also gotten super dried very small amounts for pitta for pitta you will only use the not the white wine but i guess the red wine and also depending on how much they've aged so for the more age they have the the better they have for kapha so i don't know about that but did you know we use wines in uh, ayurveda wines are important part of ayurveda and uh, in the practitioner uh, program we used to make um, <laughs> we make ginger ale uh, you know what is it called in you know sarsaparilla though we the indian sarsaparilla we do we do quite a few stuff and we make fermented drinks with with <laughs> with ginger so you know fermentation only got popular now even like kombucha have you had real kombucha not the fake one that they if you want to have has anyone had kombucha here so kombucha would not be amazing for somebody who is textbook vata they may not like it but if you have exactly jamari a textbook vata because your body is telling you this is too drying right is it is drying for kapha or pitta in smaller amounts kapha would be much better so when you an actual kombucha has at least 6% alcohol content and since 6% alcohol content is considered alcohol they dilute the kombucha with all these idiotic fruit juices and it's still nice and they sell it but if you want to taste real kombucha go to the whole foods uh, alcohol section and i'm going to and try just one just try it it's not really hard it's literally 5.3% alcohol and uh one i'm sorry 1.6% alcohol or something it's just like 2% 0.2% over the limit allowed but it's not like a hard drink and just have a spoon of it or two spoons of it that's it oh yeah mary and i used to make my own kombuchas you can make a brahmi kombucha you know that right any time you yes any time you have any alcoholic and fermented thing it sucks out all the therapeutic things out of the herb so the same here the same grape when you turn this grape into a raisin what is it good for no in uh, that's correct marine i'm i'm thinking in terms of tell me what element it's increasing in terms of element it is increasing vata oh, sorry it is increasing kapha and supporting vata and in ayurveda we, the same raisins we dried them now we soak them in milk or we soak them in water 
or we cook with them. And now we have added the water on the top of after drying them. It increases ojas. But grapes do not increase ojas. Grapes have to be dried and they have to become raisins. After they have become raisins, then we rehydrate them. Only after we rehydrate them by cooking or if you guys have made uh, you know, raisin cookies or whatever, that's when they are increasing. Uh, they're increasing uh, kapha and supporting immunity. And then they're also supporting rasadhatu. Same thing. And the same grapes have now been turned into wine. Yeah. And then it can be used like one teaspoon. And we are talking half teaspoon. You know, you can add your dried herbs. You can add, take any dried herbs, whatever it is. You can take rose. You can take lotus. You can take um, whatever you feel, lavender. And you can add to your wine for one night only. And the next morning, you can have it with uh, uh, in Ayurveda, honey and wine should not wine, honey and alcohol should not be uh, added together. Also, ghee should never be added to wine. So what it does is because it has a quality of extraction. So it will extract all the stuff in the herb. And we did that, right? When we made the oil, uh, we put the herbs and we added the oil on the top of it, right? When we did the lab. The same thing we do with the wine. We only pour enough wine to cover the herb. That's it. And in a couple of days, it's ready. We sieve it out and then half a teaspoon is, the, is what's used. And so you're seeing the same, same thing is doing different things. Is everybody with me or have I lost you guys? Yeah. So seeds increase prana. Can you think of some seeds? Sesame seeds. Yep, that's correct. Would you give sesame seeds in winter or summer? Winter. You would give sesame seeds in winter. Yeah. Definitely to a pitta, you never want to give them if their pitta is super high. But if the pitta is kind of normal or their vata goes high, you can give them sesame in small amount. But in summer, you kind of sesame increases heat in a body, mind. We avoid it unless, you know, unless you are very, you are suffering from very vata issue, then sesame seeds are fine. Yesterday, I was watching a, a documentary called Flavorful Origins on Netflix, and it was showing different parts of China and some of the things there. You know, I, I mean, I love cooking and recipes and so on. And one of the things that they were showing, there is this uh, mountain region in China where people in their summer, their summer is like 58 degrees. It's like a really mild summer. In summer, they use sesame. In winter, they use lilies and things like that. Lily bulbs are very interesting. When you have branches or roots, they help the deeper dhatus, muscles and the skeletal systems. Any, any root or branches, yeah? For example, Arjun branch, Arjun is a branch of a tree, correct? The Arjun that we use in Ayurveda is a branch like cinnamon, it's a bark. And it is good for the cardiac muscles. Just la last night, yesterday, I got my microscope out and we were looking at smooth muscles and cardiac muscles and uh, different muscles. Maybe I should get it to one of the uh, labs. So much and so interesting to see. So, we will, so literally, we were looking at the datus, and then we were. I was also showing Ishan, uh, you know, uh, the cross section of lotuses, or cross section of water lily, or cross section of uh, uh, different herbs. And the amazing thing is the the roots and branches, the the slide, the microscope slide for asti dhatu or mamsa dhatu, if is similar to that of the cross section of the plants and the herb. For example, if you see the cross section of the lotus, it kind of looks like uterus. It's just amazing. Sorry, not the uterus. It looks like an ovary. It's really amazing. I, I have to get those slides and we can look at them one day. 
Can I move on or any questions? All right, I've saved it here. I think we already covered this. Some example, space, Mahabhuta is leaves, flowers, buds, beans, legumes, air, it just general, just general stuff. Water, Mahabhuta is maple syrup, watermelon, pumpkin, water lily. Um, I learned how to do four recipes with water lily because I bought these dried water lilies from um, a local Asian store. And I'm like, what am I going to do with them? So... Nandini ji, do you cook with flowers? Uh, yeah. Which flower do you use? Pumpkin flowers. Oh, yeah. the Yeah, I have used gourd flowers and pumpkin flowers. But water lily, I know, but I've not used this. First time I'll be using it. Okay. So, let's go here. Your dravya, your herbs can be mineral-based or animal-based. An example of a mineral which is more fire Mahabhuta is ruby. Does anyone have a ruby or have you touched a ruby, an actual ruby? Or, you know, gone to a, like go to a department store and have them pick out the ruby. It feels warm. So, so many times what happens, you know, we have preference for certain stones. Like Jamaria, your vata. You might like rubies if you touch it because it feels warm. Oh, you, rubies, your stone? Awesome. And for some people, you know, for a pitta person, they may not like ruby. They may like, ah, oh, I like diamond because diamonds are cold, right? <laughs> so if you're kind of attuned to your, you will not like it as much. You might prefer something else. So a uh, sap of rocks, crystals, honey, milk, Example of water, Mahabhuta. Earth is, I mean, we are mostly talking about mineral right now, is powdered crystals and gems. Which is not something we learn in counselor. So we know rasa is perceived through taste buds. Where do we perceive rasa? There are these, when we eat, yeah? When we are eating, then the tongue has taste buds that tell us what the taste is. That's the rasa. And guna, we won't know what is the quality till it actually metabolizes. It will only be later. But if we park as soon as the enzymes have acted, the food is getting digested and the enzymes have acted, hydrochloric acid has come, pitta starts acting on that food, that vipak is immediately weakened. Vipak is exposed. Make sense? And we for each one, there is a different, you know, so we, you know, there is, there is rasa, then there is virya. What is virya? Virya is the potency. And I think we've talked about this. I don't know if you have, but you know, like you have people like in Mexico, even in Italy, in India, there is this concept of men having the word for a courageous man or a soldier is veer. Let me just. Yeah, that is the word. Somebody who is courageous man or a courageous soldier because the potency, the machismo, is the, that is what it is. Is it making sense? Yes, thank you. That's a good one. Virabhadrasana. Virabhadra is a form of, a very macho form of. And his female form, his, his is Bhadrakali. That's a good one. Thank you. So, Virabhadra. So, when um, there's a whole story that I'm not going to get deep into, but Virabhadra was created from Lord Shiva was super, super angry, very angry. And what happens when Lord 
Shiva is angry, the universes are destroyed. So he didn't want to do that. He just wanted to destroy one person who made him angry, who had was responsible for Sati uh, dying, his first wife. So he pulled a hair, one of his jatta, one of his uh, dreadlocks, because Lord Shiva has you know, dreadlocks. He pulled it and he threw it in the ground. And a form called Virabhadra, very, very strong, manly, potent. He It was personified anger of Shiva. Very, actually Mars is personified anger. It was very macho, very terrifying form with thousands of arms and each of the arm. And uh, I, sh you know, I'll probably see if I can get a YouTube something. You will see. And uh, this is Virabhadra. So that Vira, that potency, you know, we just something which is very small, but it's still potent. So that is the Vira. Everybody clear what Vira is? Okay. This is just simply saying that the first impression that we have of any substance is taste. And of course, in the tongue, there are all these nerve endings that give, that's why a tongue is called, is a sense organ, right? But at the same, you know, the the there is bodha kapha on the tongue, right? The mucosa lining, the, the bodha kapha. If there was no water on the tongue, we cannot taste. So if you've ever had a dry tongue, you would not be able to taste anything, right? Or if your mouth is dry, you cannot taste anything because you need that mucus, right? Because it's through the it's through the medium of the water element or the bodha kapha that we are able to taste. We already did this in class. We took dry samples of, and we took wet samples. Nandini got that oregano leaves that some of you had a really bad reaction to. <laughs> oh my God. It was so funny. Um, I loved it because I'm kapha. Some of you didn't really love it. <laughs> and then uh, we tasted what? I mean, we tasted quite a few dried herbs and, you know, leaves and stuff like that, trying to figure out the, yep. Jamaria, you're sensitive to these things. That's amazing. That's a good thing. That means that you, you'd you be a very good herbalist. I am also sensitive. I can taste and tell if this is good for me or not good for me. I, I don't, even if it's a Western herb. It's like a testing, muscle testing, right? Yeah, that's fantastic. You already know this, so I'm going to leave that. So we already know. So this is the part that I would like you to focus on when you review this slideshow. And when we meet next time, sweet is made of earth and water, right? And when you have something which is what earth and water, and I, I don't know, there's a rose sorbet there. That's the only picture I can find. <laughs> I know. Have you made a rose sorbet? But it's okay. Rose sorbet is awesome. So no problem. It improves the tissues, all tissues. Yeah. By the way, you can make this, you know, this waffle thing here down. You can make, the, make this with cassava or you can make this with buckwheat also. You just need a thing to, yeah, that's really good. Of course, I know how to make all kinds of desserts. <laughs> All right, it increases life. Basically, all the seven dhatus are nourished by earth and water because most of the time we are, our body, our skeletal system, our muscular system, it is made of earth, right? And then water. So sweet taste will increase generally everything. That makes sense? So this is something that I would like you to review. Satme increases satvikta. Sour taste. So um, 
some of you are interested in doing the herbology or draviology and becoming Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic herbalist next year instead of, yeah. And if I do start a herbalist group, we do, yeah, I know you, just one. And I, I mean, we need a few more people to start that. <laughs> Once you graduate, we'll see how many people sign up for that. So we get into different type of fruits because draviology includes cooking and using food and recipes for healing also. For example, we use the dry mango, the the cooking with a dried mango or an astringent mango versus a, a completely ripe mango versus uh, mango powder versus juice. It just, it has different effect, right? So here, the, the, I just found it's a little tart. Obviously, it's not as tart as uh, any citrus fruit. But, you know, whatever is tart, whatever is sour, it is generally cleansing. It is generally cleansing, right? So I would like you to, again, review this. And I, we will talk about it next week. So generally, whenever you have something slightly salty, it has a scraping effect. I'll give you an example, or it releases things. Uh, have you ever cooked? I know there's quite a few cooks here right now. Have you ever cooked with uh, Nandini, Disha, Indiraji? Have you cooked with Loki or I don't know what language? Yes. What is there another name for Loki, Indira? I don't know. The green. Kaddu. Kaddu. Kaddu or Loki or bottle gourd. Yes, bottle gourd. Bottle yes, gourd. bottle gourd. Yeah. And, yeah when we... and when we. I don't know. Let's see. So when we cook with it, if you put, and it, it is something like I make these bottle gourd pakoras, fritters, you have to add salt to it. Or you, some, there are many veggies, you add salt to it and leave it. What happens to the veggies when you add salt to it? Does anybody know? Water. Watery. Oops. It releases water, right? Water comes out. So when we say, when we are taking, so the... Uh, when there is edema or when there is uh, if you if you take sandavadi or like a salt oil you massage somebody with that it helps relieve stiffness the it releases that water uh, when here in by water we mean fat cells we mean um, water in the muscles and so on and so on so it has a piercing sharp melt down effect scraping effect however in small amounts because we are not talking about diet. So salt has that cleansing, scraping effect. Yeah, and we're specifically talking about rock salt here. Everybody clear about that? Yeah. Pungent qualities. So pungent. Oh, this is from, I think I'm going to change this. It, we should say supports disease, not cure, because has lacrimation means our lacrimal glands or tear glands, you know, eyes get cleared out. And also onions. Has anybody cut onions? And your eyes feel wonderful later after they have. Anybody who likes to cut onions here? If you have a client, <laughs> if you have a client who has dry eyes, exactly, would you ask them to cut onions? Wouldn't it be better than putting all kind of eye eye gels in the eyes? What, what would be a better natural thing? If somebody tends to have, I mean, not the kind of dry eyes where it's chronic issue. No, Marion, more important than rose water ghee. When you cry, your tears are produced by your body. They are more cleansing than rose water and ghee. Ghee is nourishing and it's not cleansing. Rose water is astringent. Yes. So best thing for eyes, if your eyes are dry or something went in your eyes, if something goes in your eyes like, you know, wind or sand, what happens? Do, do your eyes water and do, you, does your, do your eyes make tears and all of whatever went in your eyes comes out, right? Yes. So if you were to once in a while, and you know, we spend so much time looking at screens. We are always subjecting our eyes to, uh, 
you know, screens nowadays. So that's why we need to do rose water and ghee to nourish those eyes. But to cleanse the eyes, if you cut onions, <laughs> Jamari is like, I do it, I do it, I cut onions. Yes. Yeah, C can I give you a tip for on cutting the onions? Sure, go ahead. go ahead. Yeah. So if you cut your onion and keep it for 10 to 15 minutes in the fridge, in container, doesn't smell out in your fridge, but it stops watering your eyes. But we want to water the eyes, Nandini. Ji. Yeah, but but like you know, if you want to cut for so many to cook. No, no, no. We we're, we're talking ayurvedically. <laughs> Cutting onion is good for the eyes. I'll tell you. I'm I'm telling you. I uh, I've had relatives, uh, old old relatives, who had eye issues and dry eyes and putting. And I just <laughs> gave them this, cut onions. And I'm telling you, I'm talking about red onions. <laughs> And just cut a little bit, you know, just one minute. And that's enough for you to cleanse your eyes. Once the eyes are naturally cleansed, then use rose water and ghee. Yeah, we want we want that to happen. <laughs> it's a it's a Ayurvedic thing. Marion, that's a really good. I, I, I hope he still likes me. <laughs> After, no, no. Manjulali said, I didn't say husband has to get it. <laughs> okay. So anything that is bitter, anything that is bitter is good for the liver. Right? Just remember bitter liver and spleen. Bitter generally cleanses blood, is Raktu Shodhana. Not everything, but most of the time. It is good for pancreas. Right? It is generally good for liver support, spleen support, right? Can you give me some examples of something? that cleanses blood or is good for liver bitter gourd bitter gourd something i had bought in the internship in the first week uh garlic yeah. is pungent bitter, neem. yes neem neem and bitter gourd here anything else bilva yeah what about uh, any western herb what about dandelion Any one of you would know what dandelion is or any western herb which is bitter? Any generally, as a general rule, even in uh, traditional Chinese medicine, have you heard of the, you know, some Chinese medicines are so bitter they make you, ah, it's terrible. Generally, anything which helps with fevers, anything that is Rakta Shodhana will have some bitterness. And it'll be good for the skin. We'll be supporting fever and so on. Okay. I have one more minute and then I'm done. Astringent is calming, healing. And why is astringent constipating? Because it absorbs water. Yeah. So please go through this. It's in the...